Welcome back. All right, how about a top 10 list for everybody? So as the season winds down, I thought, what better to talk about than 10 surprises from this season? And there have been some surprises this season, haven't there? So I wanted to rank this one through 10. Now I've got 10 on the paper, and as usual, I do not have uh, any kind of ranking system set up for this. So I'm going to go from the ones that I, I am least surprised by to most surprised by. Uh, number 10... And during, during the time where I'm writing, feel free to discuss amongst yourselves whatever you'd like. Could be the weather, could be some other sports, maybe maybe something about the Oakland A's. We're no longer in Oakland. But uh, Buffalo's drought continues. Yeah, no playoffs. Now, I'm not necessarily that surprised that Buffalo's not going to make the playoffs again. It's the fact that all their scoring has kind of fallen apart. Everything's kind of just, it, it hasn't been. Like last year, you could look at them and say they missed the playoffs, but they were close. They missed the playoffs, but there's a lot to build on. This year, I mean, there's Lukanen. There are some good things there, but it's harder to dress this season up in, in any manner and say this is a, a, a sign of good things to come. I have no idea what's going to happen with Buffalo from here. Um, number nine. So the Seattle Kraken were a playoff team in part because they were very, very good at scoring goals. And this year, much like Buffalo, these teams have kind of mirrored each other this way. Everybody's goal scoring just kind of drops. And it's enough to keep Seattle out of the playoffs this year. Uh, there was a lot of optimism and a lot of people rooting for Seattle this year. I, I just didn't see it. And I, I even when they were winning that, like that nine-game winning streak, I remember thinking... I mean, it gets them in the mix, but I still don't see them being there. So for Seattle, there's definitely something there. Uh, and there's there's the possibility in the offseason with the right moves made by Ron Francis, they could be back in the mix next year. But the drop-off in their scoring and just they haven't looked all that dangerous. Uh, number eight. Hmm. Number eight. I'll go with this one. So again, I don't know if we expected Ottawa would be a playoff team, but they didn't improve this year. Uh, the Ottawa Senators, let me go ahead and put a dot next to that. So I know that I've talked about that one, although it's on the board. But at any rate, uh, yeah, the Senators not improving has been been a bit of a shocker to me. And they're in the same realm as Buffalo. Uh, before this season started, I thought Buffalo, Detroit, and Ottawa all had pretty equal arguments for how they could all of a sudden be in the mix and maybe be a playoff team. The Sens have not been in the mix. They have to start winning games in October and November. This is just reality. They have to get off to a good start next year because the the fans are, are not going to be happy if, if next season starts like this one. We could see attendance drop off a bit in Ottawa. Eventually, it happens everywhere. The fans eventually tune out and just say, I'm not paying money to watch that. And so then it becomes a little bit harder to fill that brand new building if your, your team's not playing very well look at buffalo's attendance buffalo was a guaranteed sellout not that long ago now yeah no um next on the board number seven i'll go with this one You know, I get I get ahead of myself. I figured out that I, I skip letters because I get ahead of myself. Um, so before this season started, I think we had expected the Capitals to likely be a wild card, not even a wild card, a lottery team, not wild card lottery. Uh, but the reality is they won games and they were doing it without goals from Ovechkin. The expectation obviously with the Caps is, well, you have to have Ovechkin going. He's their goal scorer. And even though he's potentially going to end up still being their top goal scorer, they've been able to win games without him scoring. And they've done it by playing a style of hockey that it may not always be pretty to watch, but it works for them and uh, it's kept them in the mix. So the Capitals not only don't drop off, which may have been the expectation, but they're able to win when Ovechkin's not scoring goals, which I'm trying to think back in their history. I, I don't know if that's been a thing. 
Uh, it feels like they've struggled when Ovechkin's goal scoring hasn't been all that high. I'm trying to remember the 33 goal season he had, how that worked out for Washington. But again, I think if I told anybody, hey, Ovechkin's scoring is going to drop off precipitously this year and the Caps could still make the playoffs, I think people would have said, so you got out of your cell. I think the hospital you got out of is just around the corner. Uh, number six. So coming into this year, and, and even halfway through the season, the conversations were, what was Nashville going to sell? Who are they going to sell? Who are they going to sell to? How much selling would be involved? Has the selling started now? Um, why would guys be signing in Nashville? That seems crazy because, you know, if O'Reilly wants to close his career on a winning note, I don't know why he's going to Nashville. Yeah, Nashville's looked pretty good. Now, Nashville's got three losses in a row at the time I'm recording this, but the reality is Nashville this year looks better than last year. And I don't think any of us expected that. Before the season started, there was plenty to talk about, okay, so Saros is probably going to go because they're going to want to make room for Askarov. And they've got Lankin in. And, yeah, Saros didn't get traded because they'd be ridiculously crazy to trade him. So Nashville up there. And then next up, let's go with Winnipeg. That's yeah, probably a little too wordy, but Winnipeg's improvement wasn't foreseen by a lot of people. Uh, now, Winnipeg has had their struggles recently, yes, but the reality is that Winnipeg, for years I've heard about the core needs to be changed. This is a team that needs big changes. They didn't have those big changes. They did have the Dubois trade. That Dubois trade helped. But at the time that Dubois trade was made, there were those who said, well, you know, Winnipeg, clearly guys don't want to play there. Uh, they were going to lose Shifley, they were going to lose Hellebuck, and then Hellebuck and Shifley stayed. And then it was, well, why are they staying there? This team's mediocre. They're terrible. They haven't been terrible. Now, I'm not saying Winnipeg's going to go far in the playoffs, just it looks like Winnipeg's a better team this year than last year. And I, I do find that to be somewhat surprising. So go ahead and dot right there. Uh, number four... So coming into this season, I had figured Boston would probably finish third in the division. I figured Toronto should be number one, Florida should be number two, Boston number three. Boston doesn't drop. Now, Toronto and Florida do not make it into the top ten. I thought about Toronto and I thought, you know what, Toronto's still going to end up around 100 points. Uh, maybe my expectation Toronto would be first in the division was just misguided. It probably was. So Boston not dropping, I think it's been a surprise because they did not go out and find those centers to replace Bergeron and Krejci. Um, Boston just managed to stay in the mix when it was not expected. And so they could very well end up finishing first in their division. Again, I don't know what they're going to do in the playoffs, but this video is not about the playoffs. It's about the fact that Boston has not dropped off in the standings. All right, so dot right there. Uh, number three on the board. All right, number three on the board. If I had said before the season started, the Vancouver Canucks are going to finish with more than 100 points this year and they could end up finishing first in the division, again, I would have been told, so you got out of the hospital. Listen, seriously, dude, you it's just around, just please go, please. Officer, can you kind of little, he's, he's not with it. Uh, the Canucks 100 plus point season is nothing but a success. I understand that the first half has raised expectations, so the second half doesn't feel like success, comparatively speaking, but it has been a huge surprise that the Canucks, one can argue that they're a contender. One can argue that with the right moves this offseason, if they don't do it this year, they could be in the mix for next year. And, and again, for me, that has told me that, okay, Alvin knows what he's doing. I wasn't happy with how Boudreaux got fired last year. But uh, this is a new season, and uh, yeah, the, the Canucks have done a, a really good job of, of changing the narrative quickly, and they kept Patterson. Uh, number two. Now, this may just be me, because I've seen people saying, we saw this coming, but... 
Last year, the Devils were one of the best teams in the league. And then they made changes in the offseason, which they felt would make them better, and they haven't. Uh, their blue line was revamped. Their blue line became very inexperienced, especially once Dougie Hamilton got hurt. And, and I don't think we can overstate the importance of Dougie Hamilton to that blue line or what it's done to that blue line since he's been hurt. But uh, the Devils being in the mix for not necessarily a lottery, but not far off from being in the lottery mix, is a surprise to me. I know it's been a surprise to a lot of others. I did see other people saying, hey, they had a good year. They're going to fall back. To those people, I say, Nostradamus to you. Good job. Uh, but yeah, the Devils changes backfiring to me. That would be number two on the surprise scale. And number one for me... Flyers aren't a lottery team. I had expected the Flyers to be in the lottery, so did everybody else. Nobody expected the Flyers to be in a position where they could make the playoffs with two weeks left. So yes, they could back out. Yes, they could fade. The feel-good story could become a mixed, mixed tale at best. But they're not a lottery team. And at times, with hard work, they've looked pretty good. And they look like a team that could be dangerous come playoff time. And if Fedotov ends up being the kind of goaltender they think he could be, who knows, right? Uh, definitely with Erson, Sandstrom, it's been a, a bit of a mixed bag there. And if Fedotov can steady the net, who knows? But the Flyers not being a lottery team, to me, is the biggest surprise of this season. But let me know your thoughts. Which surprise has been the biggest for you this regular season? Um, has it been Arizona's still not a playoff team? Maybe it's that the Oilers aren't first place in the division as of yet. Um, maybe maybe your surprise will be scoring related that McDavid has a shot at 100 assists or Matthews has a shot at 70 goals, something like that. Let me know your picks in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.